I don't know if you're like me, but I love recycling things that are usable, but just not beautiful anymore. One of the examples is this bench. My wife and I stripped and refinished, and now it sits in our front room. And one of the places I love to go to do this is thrift stores. Here in the Salt Lake Valley, we have Deseret Industries, there's Goodwill, there's all sorts of different thrift stores that sell functional items that just need to be prettied up. And one of the ones I'm going to do today is this serving tray. It has an acrylic base, it goes down, and I'm gonna clean this up, spray paint the base, acrylic pour on this, and show you how for just, I think this was $1.75 total, for $1.75 and then another three or four dollars of paint, I'm gonna turn this into something beautiful. First things first, we're gonna take some warm soapy water and wash everything. If there were any price tags or stickers or anything, you wanna make sure you get all that residue off, get all the oils and dirt and grime that might be on there because all of that will show through your spray paint and your acrylic pour and we don't want that for our finished product. Next, we're gonna spray paint the base matte black. Now we want two full coats here because that will give us a nice uniform color everywhere. We also wanna make sure that we are spraying from different directions every time so that we get all the little nooks and crannies. We're going to do two layers on the top, two layers on the bottom, and let it dry at least a few hours in between. We'll also be adding a layer of lacquer on the very end because spray paint tends to rub off if you don't have a hard top coat and the lacquer will give us that and protect it and allow us to clean it more easily in the future. Next to prepare the platter for gesso and then paint I like to lightly sand in this case I'm doing one side and then each of the edges because that's where the paint will be this isn't strictly necessary, but I find that shiny surfaces like this acrylic or glass need a little bit of tooth to hold the gesso and to hold the paint. So I prefer to sand it a little and wash it off before I start my painting. For my paints, I'm using gold. As you can see here, it's very thin for this Dutch pour technique I'm doing. Then I have a copper, which is a little brighter color, also very thin. And the base is going to be white, and I'll add a little bit of black in also. Now I want to flood the surface of the platter with white paint before I start my Dutch pour, and I'm just going to blow it out with my blow dryer here so it gets paint everywhere uniformly. So for this Dutch pour technique I'm pouring the colored paint into the middle. I only want a little bit of black because that will take over. And then I'm going to flood the paint on both sides with some white. Then I'm using my blow dryer to push that white paint up over the top of the other paints. And then when I finally blow out the paints it will make those colors a little bit more subtle because it has the white in them and then give kind of a wavy effect. I really love this Dutch pour technique because of these cells that you see immediately getting created right where the colored paint and the white paint meet. So if you'll notice this top left section is very bland and doesn't really fit with the rest of the painting so I actually spent the next 15 minutes or so trying to resolve that. I should have started my blowout from the center and blown out either direction to keep that from happening on the edges. However just like with battle in the acrylic pour your plan only lasts until first contact and then something b is bound to go awry. Luckily it's relatively easy to fix something like this and I was able to get a composition that I liked after scraping the paint off completely and ended up with something pretty magnificent if I do say so myself.
After two days when the paint was dry but not quite cured, I took some gold paint and painted the edges. It took two coats to really cover everything. And I wanted to do this because I lost a lot of the gold to the vibrance of the copper in the main painting. And this subtle gold on the sides really accentuated that little bit of uh, gold in the painting. So to finish off my painting, I'm using Liquitex Gloss Varnish. I'm mixing it 50% water to 50% varnish in this container. And then I'm using an old t-shirt that I've cut into pieces as my lint-free cloth. Now I like this method better than brushing directly onto my acrylic pour because I don't get brush marks. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little on here and I'm going to rub it in in a circular pattern and I'm going to go pretty quickly because this dries quickly and I'm going to do four different layers and I'm going to apply each layer in a different direction just so I make sure I don't have any marks for doing the the layers the exact same. You really want to make sure you have this for a pour because it gives a hard surface and if I was going to be putting food on this, I'd probably want to use a food grade resin or something instead of the varnish just to make sure that it was okay for that application. Before we do the big reveal, I just want to show you what it looked like before when we started. A clear acrylic and a rust colored gold. Okay, so here is the final product. black spray paint, and then a sealer coat, my acrylic pour, all these cool designs that we got. Painted the edges gold to give it a little bit of flair. And now, this $2 item from the thrift store is a centerpiece for my front room. So easy to do, super cheap and you can make it in whatever colors you want.